tyrussmash.com, uh, videos at the YouTube page, Tyrus Smash, and interestingly enough, the Twitter is still at Brodus Clay, which... If it great, ain't broke. It's a hot name. Listen, hey, somebody call his mama. And if you watch the videos, which we've been laughing our asses off, uh, this is uh, you know kind of hearkening back to... It's almost like... A little blast from the past, plus this weird beef with John Cena. You got to give us some background on what's going on with the videos, Tyrus. I'll, I'll tell it here. I'll tell you what it's all, what it stems from. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll keep it real. Um, you know, we used to do uh, back in the we do uh, appearances and stuff, right? And uh, you know, you go to the hospitals or birthday parties and stuff like that. And uh, there was this one kid that, and it was like a, I got there, and it was like uh, there was a, like the end of the day, and no one had any time to do the appearance. And I said, "I got you. I'll, I got it, boss. I mean, I'm up first, but I can get knock it out, right?" I ran into the room, and I was like, "Hey, what's up, man?" He was like, "You're not John Cena." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "What?" He's like, "You're not." But I came to see you, kid. Like, just be thankful that somebody came to see you. And um, you know, we did. We took pictures and stuff, and the whole picture he was like frowning and stuff. So I kind of like, wow. <laughs> It's like it's not John Cena, I'm like, oh boy, and uh, you know, and then we, I went to give him an autograph auction, auction figure, and he was just like, um, I already have this one, and I don't even play with it. Oh, so you know, but kids, you know, it's you know, it's not his fault, his parents. So <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I didn't blame him. I just like staring at his dad, like I can't touch him, but I'm gonna touch you because I didn't ask to be here. I'm, you know, I'm trying to help you out. Um, so it just kind of went from there, and then I, I trained at Hard Knock South, and uh, he made that comment on Raw. And, and John and I, I would never say that we're like best friends or nothing like that, but we're cool. You know, we, we, we crack jokes and stuff when we're, when we're lifting and stuff, and that's usually the only time we see each other is at the gym. But it's always been very like platonic and respectful, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad it's a platonic relationship. And uh, Well, you got to say that nowadays, just to be clear. <laughs> um, I'm a breeder, coming out today. Um so we went, you know, just real cool. And then I'm sitting there, and I don't really watch Raw because it comes on, you know, at like the same time as, like, other stuff, like paint peeling. And wow. um, so I was just chilling, and my phone started lighting up. And a lot of my buddies, like Big E and stuff, were like, yo, what what was that about? I was like, what's what about? XFL? Funkasaurus? Mm. I'm like, say what? What? And then I looked on Twitter, and I was like, what the hell I do? I didn't do nothing to nobody. I've been gone for a minute. Why are you picking on me? And it just kind of went from there. And then I was like, I started a beef with him. And the joke is that he doesn't know we have a beef because he's John Cena. So uh, so I'll stand there like when he walks in, like staring at him. He'll just walk by. Hey, no, nah, I'm, I'm calling you out. He wouldn't notice it. So I just kind of went from there. Uh, and I just started playing around with it. And the guys at Swole Shop, I pitched the idea about um, being shown up by uh, an extreme fan and as a family member and we just started messing around with it. We found a great guy to play the the uh, diehard Cena fan, Little Johnny. Yeah, aka Knuckles. Knuckles. Um, Knuckles. He's also my uh, head of security. So uh, he's actually debuted head of security in here. Um, you need a head of security. Apparently, I do because he. Uh, we did uh, Forty Nine Shades, Shade Forty Five, and uh, we was in there with a lot of hip hop moguls and stuff. And all of a sudden, and Knuckles is only about four eleven, and uh, he had his arms crossed and he was flexing on everybody and i was like what are you doing he's like i'm in security i got this i don't know these guys i was like you're as big as my you know what just stand there i mean because he <laughs> he filmed the thing with me right and he's a, he's a really good guy he's a little different but he's a, he's a good guy and he was like so now what are you gonna do i'm like well i'm gonna go do a radio interview and stuff and he's like interview the only interview i've ever been on is a job interview so i, I looked at my manager and i was like do you, you want to go to the interview? He's like, well, my bedtime's 12 o'clock. Can you guys get me back by 12? Yeah, sure. I, I guess we could. So we brought him in, and uh, that's when he let everybody know he's my head of security. But, <laughs> little uh, Johnny. Little Johnny. But he's, hey, that's who he is, though. Like, he is diehard Cena. That's like, funny. So, uh, you know, that's all just letting him just do his thing. And uh, as the episodes go, he gets more and more bolder. And, uh, we so we've seen months. two out. There's a yeah. bunch more to come, I would suspect. Yeah, we got a couple more. As he gets more comfortable with it, he pulls no punches. And uh, I have to hold up a couple times from legitimately just choking the life out of him some of the stuff he says to me. So. Well, I love when the scene of music hits and you're like, it, it, it sounds like the ice cream man is coming by or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's, you know, have you seen a lot of Johnny's? I mean, being around the WWE and being a, a former WWE superstar, did you see the 30, 35 year old men with the Cena gear on? 
I still see him. For <laughs> <laughs> a TNA house show, and oh. there'll be rows and rows of guys in, in Cena shirts, and I'm like, you know, he's not here, right? He's not coming. <laughs> You know, uh, in, indie show. I got this thing called fan cam. I've been doing because because I have to videotape them because they're so weird. Some of the fans and you see the poor kids all dressed up and John Cena stuff, looking at their dad. They're waiting in line all day to meet uh, wrestlers and stuff. And I don't think Dad tells them that they're not going to see John Cena. He's not going to be in Pennsylvania this weekend, guys. But it's that's the whenever you go to a wrestling show, I guarantee you'll see at least. Nine or ten John Cena shirts, whether it's WWE or not. Yeah, you can't really avoid it, Dave. Unfortunately. No. Well, do you, do you still get the wrestling buddies? People have you signed the wrestling buddies? You know, you did have one. Still have it. Yeah, uh, I think he's on clearance for like five bucks at Walmart now. But uh, uh, yeah, I still sign that stuff. Um, uh, all that stuff was cool. Uh, I had a good time with it. But um, you'll see more and more. Cena is like, and he doesn't do anything wrong. I think that's why everybody doesn't like him because we're all flawed and we're always you know and he's not so it's really easy not to like him you know you know it's funny you say that we were just having this conversation uh lesnar did the austin podcast after raw last night which was maybe the most interesting thing you know that we've seen from brock lesnar a long time because you get a little bit of the personality you get into the guy's head austin's throwing questions right and left and he's he's giving answers as best he can and he just doesn't like wrestling. He doesn't like people. He doesn't like leaving his house. He's, he's, he's a bit crazy, okay? And the reason I bring this up is I made the comparison to a John Cena that John Cena could be backstage and he hates everybody's guts and God knows what he's doing or saying, and, but he comes in front of the camera or, or he's talking at a public appearance and everybody's great. He's got an amazing way of framing things and he's truly this... this guy that is kind of like this beacon of hope and you know to his credit you know propping up a lot of organizations and all that good stuff but give us something backstage that the guy does wrong because it is annoying it's always john cena never give up and all this good stuff what does the guy do wrong please um you know what it is it's and i, I sand out and um slater i used to say this all the time you know john cena is everybody's friend and if you're everybody's friend in my mind you're nobody's friend um Everyone likes him, so I don't like him because um, that's just uh, who I am. But uh, he doesn't really do anything wrong. That's the most annoying thing about it. He's always on time. He's always where he's supposed to be. He always has his stuff done. You know, you, you'll never hear him like, oh, my bad. Sorry, guys. I'm 15 minutes late. And he could be 15 minutes late, sure. but he never is. Um, and it'll drive you nuts, you know, because if you're looking for to get an angle on him, you just can't, you know, because he's just – He's on point. He's just one of those guys that, like, you just at school that would, the teacher will talk to you for a long time about how great he is, and you just sit in the back plotting his death. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? And uh, what about lifting? I mean, you gotta be able to bench more than him, or oh yeah, I'd, I'd most certainly bench more than him. But you know, he's uh, his complete lifts are pretty. I mean, he's uh, he's a beast in his own right. His uh, his squatting and uh, his deadlifting and snatching clean, like he's an animal. So. Um, <laughs> to be in the, in the same class as him as far as like lifting and stuff like, like we have the the one ton club at Hard Knock South or whatever and uh he's uh, afforded that's one thing like and, and it's funny our relationship's funny because it wasn't for John Cena a lot of things wouldn't have happened for me in terms of like uh they ran over at WrestleMania in Miami and they'd actually cut the Mama Clay dance thing and uh John and I were always, like I said, respectful. We're not, we're not buddies, um, but you know, there's a respect there. And he just looked at me and, and said, "I gotta go to the bathroom. I don't know for about eight minutes." And wow. I was like, eight minutes. Yeah, that'll work." And he went and did the thing, and, and I went out. And if he doesn't do that, I don't go out. You're not wow. at WrestleMania. And WrestleMania 29, you were supposed to be out of WrestleMania and we 29. Got cut, you got and cut. you know what's funny is he found me and he said I did everything I could, and wow. I believe, and, and that's just who he was. So it's like he's not the like I said he's. He's uh he's a different guy, but in terms of like what's good for business, um if he thinks you're what's good for business, and, and he'll he'll be there. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of a different thing. He's done some really good, uh, cool things that he didn't necessarily have to. And I can't say every top guy would, because unfortunately, uh, 
sometimes the most dangerous thing in wrestling is in the wrestlers that you're not wrestling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh, guys, who, they're not going to let that. If your bright, if your light is shining, they'll find ways to dim it. You know, just because their own issues. And Cena's just not one of those guys. But he sounds like that guy that is that top guy that has certain people's ear. Like if he says something, it sounds like his word is almost gospel. Have you seen the sponsors in the WWE? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's Cena. I mean, he's and there's no one close to him. Well, you know, it's interesting because you talk about the sponsors, and when you think about the Funkasaurus, that is an infinitely sponsorable, kid-friendly character, which, listen, uh, before you got injured and took that time off and then obviously made your re-debut as the Funkasaurus, we're thinking badass heel you know something similar, but but a little bit more enhanced to what we see with TNA. Which, by the way, congratulations on the number one contendership. Oh, thank you very much. Hope you uh, go for that championship at some time soon. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that in a few. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, to me, we had no idea what we were going to get except what we wanted to get, and then when we got what we got, we were like, "What the hell is going on around here?" But, and we've talked to you about this before, you got to embrace what you got. You got to turn chicken crap into chicken soup, so to you speak. You got to pay the light bill. Yeah. And and you made it fun. You made it great. Not only that, but the Funkadactyls would never be where they were without the Funkasaurus and the whole gimmick. And it's really, it, to me, it was something that you got to you got to work. You got to do the work. So ultimately there's a guy that's calling the shots or guys that are calling the shots and and you got to, you know, kind of fall in line. But you got to embrace it and you got to make it hot. And honestly, your run as Brodus Clay the Funkasaurus, I think was brilliant work for what you had to do. And and a guy that could have been so different, so much more, you 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 did what you had to do and you made it cool. Well, I appreciate that. And that's kind of like when I look back at it because to be honest with you when we were four uh, vignettes deep into Brodus Clay, and I just came off doing a horror movie. So everything about me <clears throat> was uh, going to be bad. So when – and this is all for me cracking jokes in the locker room. I, I, I've talked about it before. I don't see how cracking jokes equates to dancing. I still ain't quite figured it out. <laughs> but um, – <laughs> It'd be different if I was pop locking and moon walking in the back room, like, wow, he really loves to dance. Let's do something with that. <laughs> I get that. But bagging on somebody's mama is not, in my opinion, dance worthy. Um, so when it when it came to me and, and Triple H, I, he's one of those guys, man, that tells you straight up, but like, he don't flinch when he tells you something. And he was flinching like, oh, hey, uh, <laughs> oh, Clay. Uh, <laughs> So the old man was thinking uh, maybe he'd be a baby face. I'm like, huh? And like what? Like we going to kidnap people and like change their life for the better or something like that? And he's like, oh, no, maybe you're going to dance a little bit. I'm like, you know, come out smiling. And I was like, huh? Like, <laughs> what? No. Like, <laughs> and uh, I took it hard. Like I was like, well, can I go you know, back to Dusty and, and figure it out? But, uh, I mean, that mm. was a long walk to the rental car that night, you know, and like – I'm like just I'm just gonna quit because I'm not gonna dance. I can't. I didn't even dance in high school. Like even at the dances and stuff, I chilled. I hung on the wall. I bobbed my head. You know, the girl standing in front of me. I might go like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might. So I just didn't dance. Hell's no. And when I got home, I was like trying to ask, like, so you know, what should I do? And it was like, oh yeah, you're good. You're good. Because you know they just saw the check. Like you know, get the check. Forget the fact that I'm. Standing in the mirror, like trying to dance, and I'm crying. Like I can't. I'm not going out there. I just did a thing where I was talking about hide your boyfriend, and it's in black and white, and fists, and people were scared, and <laughs> little girls covering the face, and then I'm gonna jump out, looking like big ass Barney. Just I didn't know. In the first name they had for me was we're gonna call you Heavy G. And I was like, oh oh boy, no, bullsh- I ain't nobody's heavy. <laughs> heavy D just died. No, like I mean, come on, man. That's no. And I'm on a diet, and the rest of my wrestling career is going to be heavy in the front of it. So just break the Twinkies out now because it doesn't. <laughs> nothing good about it was happening. And then I went to see the Dream Man, and he just laughed at me. And he's like, uh, I don't do Dream Impressions, but he's basically said, You're paying for my sins because you're one of mine. Mm. And uh, you remember when I had the polka dots? I was like, Yeah, but you, before that, you were the NWA champion. He's like, I know I was the man before that. I said, I don't have it before that. I'm just. That, you know, and he was like, you got it. Don't worry about it. And then he made me dance with him 
uh, for about an hour and a half. Wow. And I did not want to do it. You did the yeah. Teen Wolf, man. You did that. I stole all, that. Yeah, 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 that's exactly. Thank you, because that's exactly where it came from. Um, um, I was, and he was like, what's your favorite song? And at the time, I liked moves like Jagger. Like, I was like, yeah, that's cool. It's kind of catchy. Because everything else I listen to is gangster rap. Yeah. Cube ain't going to help me do this. <laughs> so he played that, and we we danced all around the ring together. And he made everybody get out, and we was in there for like, and I didn't want to dance no more. And he's like, keep doing it, and I'll throw a punch. I'm like, this man, I don't know how you did it. He goes, well, you're going to find out real quick in about two weeks. So... Wow. And then I said I needed help, and uh, Naomi was standing around there, and I was like, Naomi, will you, will you help me do something? Because her and I had some other stuff that we were going to do where, like, uh, the Brodus Lake character, she was a witch. She had this witch doctor dance she was doing. It was, like, out of this world. And she was. we were pushing for her to be my manager. We were trying to take it to a whole other weird level. And, um, you know, they shot it down because they thought it was too – uh, two out there, but then um, she was like, "Well, I ain't really doing nothing." We used to have this little joke because she didn't win NXT when everyone knew she should have won NXT, and I kind of was in the same boat. So we see each other and just go poor, poor little whatever back and forth. It's right. always you know, I don't know why we didn't win, girl. Me neither. And uh, so I got something for you. And then Cameron was just standing next to her, and I'm like, "Yeah, you can come too." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> well, you know, that's real. That's about as real as it gets. Oh, She's like, all right, right, Brody. It's Brodus, not Brody. <laughs> Brody. Um, I love her, though, now. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she helped out with the dancing and stuff, but I just wasn't ready. I was not, you know. And then when it happened, oh, man, the fans were so hot. Like, I'll never forget that kid and had his, shaved his head like me. He had his monster Brodus clay shirt he made himself. And I came out in his mouth. He didn't move. I just was fixed as I went to the ring. You could see me looking at him because I'm like, I'm so sorry. I need the money. I'm just, just, I got two girlfriends and a wife on the side. I need the money. And, oh, um, God bless. We got in the ring and I hit I hit uh, Hawkins with a and I, you know what? I never t- Hawkins needs a shout out, man, because nobody wanted to be in that debut match. Nobody. And that dude volunteered and said, I got you. Wow. And uh, yeah, he didn't have to do that because no one wanted to lose to the. They were like this dancing thing. You're gonna get. I don't want to be in the ring when the stuff starts flying. And he went out there and he did it. And I hit him with a T-bone. And the guy stood up with, like, tears in his eyes and just yelled out this, you suck, Brodus Clay. <laughs> and I was just like, my bad. And I just it just said it. It's just my bad. <laughs> and it that just echoed. That's, and then the place, like, laughed a little bit. So, so I started talking back to the audience, which you're not supposed to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, should I get him? Like, I don't just keep... You know, and uh, what were some of the other things you used to call out? You used to I talk used to just a lot. Start in the running ring. my mouth, man. I was just like, my suplex, bad. Suplex, suplex, yeah. Suplex. I was calling, I was calling spots out loud. It just, it just didn't matter because it was a dancing dude. It just didn't matter, you know. You were calling your. I was waiting for like PM ring. News to come out with me. Like I was just getting worried. It was just gonna get out of hand. The Shockmaster rolls through. It'll be like a museum of us. <laughs> Me, Max Moon, like these are the nightmares I'm having at oh, night. Oh man! The, being led to the aisle by the goggly gooker, like I, all these things, I was just, you know, the Yeti. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeti. that's where I'm at. That's my legacy. I'm Manator. You know, so that's where I, the Funkasaurus started, and uh, it just when I honestly I got home because Triple H said, "Do not look on the internet. Just get off Twitter. Stay away from everything because it's." They're really mad at you. And uh, I was like, it's not that bad. And I took a look, and it was bad. Uh, it was really bad. And they were calling me bro to something else that rhymes with clay. Uh, you know, and they was just, you didn't bodyguard for Snoop Dogg. You did his hair. Like, they was just letting me have it. Um, the internet fans were really upset at me. But uh, but then uh, this little girl sent a video in of her and her sister dancing in front of the TV. And I was like, it cracked me up. And I was like, well, I mean, I remember when JYD did that stuff and Dusty did that stuff, and I remember jumping up and being excited. So I said, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to do it in that direction to get the kids excited. And then then I had asked that the kids would come in the ring and dance after the match like they used to do for JYD and and for Dusty. And then that's when it kind of took off. And I think fans were like, you know what, this is different. We haven't had this in a while. Um, We got nine badasses, but we don't have nothing to open the show with. So that was the role that I accept. Once you accept it, then you want to be good at it. You yeah. know, then I'm bugging Naomi for new dance moves, and I didn't really bug Cameron, but I just kept going to Naomi for new dance moves and stuff like that, and she would come up with stuff because she used to dance for Orlando Magic. So, you know, she had a, a – and she knew of my limitations as far as, like, rhythm and actual knowledge of, of dance. Um, 
And you're you're in synergy, you know. There's you know, three of you, so you know. I just kind of stood in the middle answers, and but... let them twirl and stuff yeah. in front of me, and they're girls. And the, the and, splits, you which know, is nice. Punk and... adaptals, cheerleaders, not to be confused with previous gimmicks where the girls were considered, you know, ho trains right. and all that. And that was a big, big thing. I wanted to make sure that. Uh, Naomi and Cameron were Funkadactyls. That's why I came up with the name. I wanted them to have an identity where little girls would want to be Funkadactyls, not... They still you know. did the butt bump, though, which was they nice. They did. They I did. That. Was a little, that was just a little bit, but you know, that something. was an old 70s dance that was cool. True, and true. A little something for the hardcore fans that still were like, I hate you, Brodus Clay. <laughs> so you ever get the the pants caught up in the crotch when you went to snatch them? The first time I took it off, I couldn't oh. get it off my leg. Oh. Um the tearing of the pants, I had some issues with. So I'm like, wait a minute, I'm dancing for the kids, and I'm ripping my pants off. I feel this is not really <laughs> right. I mean, I get problem, it man. where we're going, but when you're like the kids, I get it. Because I know if my son and daughter were watching the show and the clown ripped his pants off, this show's over. <laughs> And I'm probably going to ask the clown, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You're fired, clown. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> and you have spandex on? Get the hell out of my party. Like, you would be, so I was, had some issues with that, you know, but, like, I guess the pyro made it cool. So, and uh, what else am I going to do? Because I wasn't doing no damn splits. Oh. You know, and then when they, they and you know what, they did, th- sometimes, and this might not be true, I felt like this wasn't supposed to work. So they kept throwing little nicks and nacks at me, like, horn swaggle. You know, my little brother, uh, who I couldn't stand. One of the worst human beings on the planet. Wow. Um, he was a bully. He used to drive me nuts. Um, but then we got we got Hornswoggle with us for a little while, and then we were doing dance-offs with Vicky. But Vicky, in my opinion, is the greatest heel uh, in, in the WWE in, a, in like the Instant last 20 years. Amazing. Just, Amazing. just unreal. Um, but, you know, we had fun with her. We just kept getting put into, like, really weird situations. Um and uh, at times I would be like, oh, I don't know if we can pull this one out, you know. And then of course we had some, you know, some out, out of ring activities going down. Oh, Cammy Cam, with the forgetting to tell me that you know she was picture was in the paper. We were in Australia when that went down, and uh, the the whole DUI thing. And oh, that yeah. was not a good mo- that was not good for momentum. And you, I'm like, hey, girl, be careful of the internet today. It looks like people are talking trash about you. Said you got DUI or something. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> We're getting ready to go on today in America's version in, in Australia. And, of course, they pumped the brakes. And then I was like, so you did? Why didn't you tell <laughs> oh, nobody? Like, man. you know, she was scared. You know, she didn't she didn't know what she was doing, um, I think. And uh, so it was just a lot of little things that started happening. And and uh, I started getting a little bit of attitude about stuff. And it's three, three people working together can be really hard when – you really don't know what's expected of you every sure. week. You know, they threw a lot of curveballs at me. You made it work, and, and Doug mentioned that, and you absolutely did. And then you said that you thought at first maybe they they wanted it to fail because at, I thought that too because you mentioned Dusty Rhodes, and here's you know one of the most iconic pro wrestlers of all time, probably one of the most popular wrestlers of, pro, of all time. He comes in, they drop the American Dream, they make him the common man, they put polka dots on him. It's almost like they do gimmicks hoping that they're it's going to fail. Give him the how do I say this? Uh, most uninspiring diva in the history Sapphire, of divas to yeah. come out and dance. And, and they made it work. They turned it around on everybody. But uh, when you know everyone else had like Miss Elizabeth and Sensational Sherry and stuff like that, uh, I believe she used to drive the guys from the arena to the their cars or stuff at night or something like that. Um, sometimes it feels that way. And... Um, that and that eats at you too. Like there's a lot. Like there's a lot of times where you because you work so hard to get there. You know, the guys don't realize how many hours. And it's just not in the ring doing countless drills and stuff. It's at home working on things. Like your whole life is basically trying to get to a certain point to get on that main roster to have that TV debut. And mine kept getting pushed back. And I was literally ready to go to an insane asylum. I just didn't. Every time I go into work, I just didn't know when I was going to debut or not going to debut. And then they changed the whole character on me. So literally, like, if there was ever a point in my life where, like, jumping off a bridge would have came into it, that probably would have been during that time because I just was so uncomfortable. I just didn't know what the hell was going on. 
TyrusSmash.com, Dave, is the website. You get all the videos there. You go to the YouTube page, Tyrus Smash, at Brodus Clay, of course, uh, former bodyguard for Snoop. I mean, it's obviously you know one of those uh, little uh, career resume things that everybody always brings up with you. I'll go right to current stuff because, first off, working with EC3, we love the guy. So I just, you know, we have a, a huge admiration for him, even though he's pissed at us right now. That's fine. Uh, What's he mad about? Oh, he's, we, we, we put him on with, with Matt Hardy recently. This mm. was before Hardy vacated his championship. And uh, we, we kind of we took Hardy's side. And he was, he's upset. He, he's very, he's very uh, sensitive. Very sensitive guy. <laughs> he is. Very sensitive. But regardless of TNA's situation, regardless of all the tapings that are going on and, and this world, world, world title series and, and what eventually happens, the one thing that I can say is they had the confidence in you, whether it's at the time and it doesn't come to fruition, but I hope it does come to fruition because the business of pro wrestling needs TNA. They had the confidence in you to make you the number one contender. That says something about you in terms of, Long-term future, obviously there's the indie scene, obviously there's always a chance to, to make it anywhere, who knows, maybe you come full circle in the business, but there's still a bright future in pro wrestling, and just talking to you now, talking to you previously, you care about pro wrestling. Oh, so, absolutely, yeah. So this is uh, this is something that I think that you can hang your hat on and be proud of, and that, you know, hey, they're looking at you as a main event guy. Well, and not just that, but it's the the... Going back to like, you know, I was the Funkasaurus, and when I left or was asked to leave uh, the WWE, I didn't want to continue that because the Funkasaurus doesn't work without the WWE in terms mm. of like the, for the, the machine. kids, the machine, yeah. the, the, the glitz and glam and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted to just get back to what I wanted to do, um, where I was at. I wanted to be known for my wrestling and being aggressive. And if that meant eventually being aggressive babyface, and so be it, that's fine. But it would be on my terms. And the first thing, when TNA was the only company that when I said I didn't want to talk at first, uh, they understood um, what I was trying to do. And I wanted to re rebuild myself, and I didn't want to do it in a way where I just came out with something new. You know, because we've seen that. Or we've seen guys just change the names to like, you know, I was the Funkasaurus and I'm the Duckasaurus. You know, you see yeah. guys do that. You know what I'm saying? They just kind of change the name a little yeah. bit, trying to keep it going. And people are like, no, bro, it's not. We know you're not here there anymore. So, um, you know, we came up with Tyrus and it just it was just simple and I just wanted to be aggressive. And at the time, it was two opportunities. You know, I could have went with um, the Revolution. <laughs> Uh, or you know EC3, who I go way back with. And Good great, choice. Yeah, a great training buddy, and uh, he's great. And a guy who was just you know he he they had him in the WWE, and I don't know if you guys remember, but him and Daniel Bryant had some lights out yeah. stuff. I mean, their their vignettes and stuff when he paid for a date with Nichols. Uh, you know, he's just <laughs> a really talented guy, and for them to be like, eh, we don't see it. Uh, and he's over at TNA doing his thing. So, you know, I called him first, and he was like, yeah, let's do it, you know. And, um, you know, once I got with him, and they're like, listen, I know what my role is in the beginning, but I'm going to get over without it. You know, and that was the point um, to where people wanted to see. And then when I did do my things, uh, my role was to be the enforcer and stuff, but the the work kept coming out, and I really think the match I had with Bobby Lashley kind of changed the, uh, the landscape. Absolutely. Um, and they're like, hey. And then – you know, we had the invasion and stuff, and I was very wide open that uh, the only way one of those invasion guys was going to beat me is if he actually beat me. And so I wasn't <laughs> asked to play. Um, and that was cool. Because uh, if you notice, me and EC3 really didn't care. Yeah. Uh, and that was our whole thing. Is, are they going for the championship? No, we don't care. So, you know, you guys fight it out. And, you know, the roster was still a foot bigger than their guys anyway. So it's like when Bobby Lashley walked out, I was like, and you guys have whom? Mm. You know, Masterpiece is solid. You know, uh, Mordeski was the big guy. And uh, that gave him a little bit of, I think he gave him a little bit of legitimacy, but, you know, the rest of the guys were a little small compared to the sure. to the lineup at, at TNA. So yeah, we said the same thing, Tyrus. You know, I was like, ooh, you guys might have uh, make a call, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just because, you know, if, if TNA was sent the killers to the front, you know, the Biss, myself, Bobby Lashley, um, Bam, and, you know, and uh, Drew McIntyre walk out there and then, and I love Sanjay, but. Me too. You know, it's not much of a fight in a cage, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, I'd take Sanjay over, you know, 
Tigre Uno. Well, but, but you know, he wears a mask. So you can't really trust the guy with a mask. So you don't, you know. But uh, you know, it was cool that, that we were a part of that. And then you know, just the, when the Battle for Glory opportunity came, um, you know, I jumped all over it. And EC was a hundred percent supportive. And we're like, listen, we'll just settle it. You know, in the family. You know, with two best friends fighting for the championship. You know, shake hands when it's over. You know, Arn and Rick did it one time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so we could do the same thing. And that was our mindset. But then, you know, stupid Matt Hardy got involved and all the cheating and stuff. And, you know, we did a press conference about it because I was so distraught and I wanted everyone to know that I, you know, support EC3 100%. So, you know, so we're good. And, uh, you know, hopefully he wins the tournament and, you know, we'll just go from there. Um, with with Tyrus having such momentum and, you know, what we – and the shows have been great. I mean, Impact has been good. But there is that question mark about the future of TNA. Are you concerned at all? About the future of TNA? You know what? TNA's been going out of business for, what, 12 years? Yeah. Something like that. Long yeah. time. And, and I feel like that comes from somewhere. Somebody with a little bit of stroke really enjoys putting the nuts to TNA. And, um, well, and it's a, always at a, its best time. It's always uh, like when it seems like uh, TNA's clicking yeah. and they're having their best shows that there's that the black the cloud. The roster's conversations are dumped on the internet. I actually, there is a l- major leak. I mean, yeah. well, where, where does Meltzer get Every single scoop that's going on. I Where does he get the emails that we from? just start doing open forum meetings. I like it. We charge like a dollar ninety nine for a subscription, and you can sit in and give helpful hints on TNA Creative. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we could all just sit around together and just brainstorm. Hey, it's better than Vince Russo, right? Yeah, and then it'd be even better because you know some of the guys like, well, I was thinking that maybe if I came out with you, tired because I get that all the time, you know. <laughs> I'll be your manager and stuff. I just need if you could pick me up and my mom pick you know like but just open it up cuz you know it's when you start a meeting with guys I'm serious please don't repeat the stuff to the meeting and it's almost telling the guy who does it like oh yeah and it's not like paraphrasing they even have the coughs and it's like you know like Tyrus answered phone without permission during meeting like it's ridiculous of all the stuff that's that's Covered in that stuff. Somebody has the meeting notes, like literally. It's unbelievable. Just, and it's funny because here's the thing Dixie Carter is a millionaire. Millionaire? Is that you can go on that? Millionaire? So I have a, it, there's a great movie called The Gambler, and I'm not sure what the, the rating is here as far as cussing or whatever, but John Goodman had an excellent point. He had uh, FU money. Um, and it sounds better when you actually say it. But uh, when you have FU money, you don't have to answer to anyone because you have money, so F you. She could walk away from TNA today, and her life won't change a bit. She's a millionaire. The fact that she stands by the company and stands by us and helps us put food on the table and get to do what we love to do says a lot about her as a person because she has taken a beating oh, yeah. as far as public opinion stuff, and I really feel like it's by design, and she's going against some of the old school guys, and you know, and, and we all make mistakes. I mean, you're trying to run a company, you're trying to get people in, you know, you believe in people and, and um, you know, not everybody was a good fit. But all I can, like myself personally, if I see a date, I'm going to go wrestle. And surrounding our locker room, like we, if we listen to everything, it'd be a miserable place. But yeah. our locker room is, man, that's all we do is crack jokes and have fun. And everyone's like, hey, we're together again. Let's go do it. You know, and uh, Bound for Glory, I really felt was like a huge breath of fresh air for us because no one was supposed to be there and we're going to be wrestling in front of shadows and stuff and the place was sold out and, and it wasn't just packed but they were diehard wrestling fans I mean they were Hot. screaming and it was like it was a fun thing to be in and like it, it was emotional and it was like cool like hey we're still here you know and I think uh, that's I kind of like being a part of something like that because whenever and that's part of like my career I wasn't supposed to make it I'm not supposed to make it you know what I'm saying I don't look this way I'm a short giant which is ridiculous you know, um, racially, I'm confusing. So, I mean, <laughs> oh, for real, like I got you know everything from where I'm I'm Muslim to I'm Italian to I'm Hispanic, and I hate breaking everybody's heart when it's like, sorry, I'm Scottish and Jamaican. Apologize. Which Jamaican is Jamaican for black? So, um, <laughs> black and Scottish. So, sorry guys. That's a nice mix, right there. You know, it's Obama without the the cool stuff. So that's all you get. And um, they, you know, just it, you're designed not to do anything. And TNA, we just they, we just keep going. And we got the India tour coming up. We just signed a big deal with them. And uh, you know, in Europe, we'd always do really well. And uh, whatever happens in the states, as far as TV, there's there will find some place. You know, and uh, you know, Destination America is still supporting us, and we're still with them. So, you know, the the haters said we were done in September. 
They were it's wrong. October, yeah. you know. So um, just can't. I can't worry. If I listened every time that something was going down, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do anything. So I just, as long as I see dates, I show up and do the best I can. I'm looking at the shirt right now. I assume TyrusSmash.com. We can get this at. Oh yeah, yeah. Funk your Saurus. Tyrus Smash with a green, ghoulish, well, you hear the music from Austin. You used to throw that finger up quite a bit. This is an aw- this. is I'm glad I have this shirt now. This is awesome. TyrusSmash.com. I love it. Well, it was, uh, it's the culmination of Tyrus. Uh, when I won, when I became the number one contender, um, at that point, Tyrus had arrived. And so it was no longer like, oh, that's the guy who used to be the Funkasaurus. No, it's Tyrus, and um, so that's where that where that shirt came from. And uh, like I said, the guys at Swole Shop are very humorous, and um, they come up with some good stuff. Like my favorite shirt, I think I have like ten of these. I rock the Hillary and uh, Donald Pump shirt pretty much. Every <laughs> <day>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look at that! It's my favorite shirt, you know. And I, I wore that on Fox. Probably why they asked me back. Um, well, probably if I took the Hillary one off. But um, <laughs> and we made one right, just Donald Pump. Cause I'm, you know, I'm excited about Donald Trump, and I hope he does get in. Cause then you'll have wrestling at the White House, which would be great, you know. Yeah, there, there would definitely oh, be some. I guarantee you, there'd be some works and shoots going on yeah, at the, but the White he, House. He had two <laughs> WrestleManias. I guarantee you, it'll be at the White House. It'll be a match. I oh my! I think of Vince McMahon, a WWE Hall of Famer in the White House. Oh, oh my yeah. God! He'd be walking around bulletproof. <laughs> if Trump only got his head shaved, damn it, Vince, damn it! <laughs> yeah. And now his hair's getting thicker, right? You see that? Like it's like I don't know. That's what happens when you're a billionaire. Yeah. You know? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I'm not even a thousandaire, so I wouldn't even know. So uh, it looks you know, like having I like fun. Having, though. I like having fun too much. Yeah, you know? yeah that that's whole what I'm savings thing just is. You know. <laughs> but I, I, at I, the same time, though, I tell you, you know, seeing your work with WWE, seeing your work with TNA, what you're doing with the videos, TyrusSmash.com, the YouTube channel, Tyrus Smash at Brodus Clay, uh, and hearing you here. I mean, the personality, you you could do whatever you want in this business at this point, which, you know, is definitely a testament to your, not only your experiences, but your sharp wit. I mean, we could go all day with you. Oh, yeah. I was a smart ass before I was big. Um, but also, I Were was Were you a ever sponge. not big? Yeah, I was, man, I was short, like uh, kindergarten. Uh, no, I'm serious. I got, you know, like, that's where I got the mouth from. And then... Craziest thing happened in the fifth grade. I got big, and I was like, "Wait a minute, I got some size with this mouth." Because most big guys can come, huh? you know, just. <laughs> and when you get stuck with them in a room, you're like, "Oh my god, guys, no, we can't." Why do you say um all the time? Or, <laughs> you know, or like I was um, I was wrestling and um, I put him in a hold and um, I'm like, "What the hell is that? Like, why are you talking that way? Like, just because you're big, you don't have to be dumb." But I guess you do. I just was small first, and then. Uh, then I got gigantic after that, but you know I got lucky, so I had to develop my my uh, talking skills and um, you know bagging and stuff. And the back of the school bus is pretty much where it all went down. And you can't do that now because you know it's a hate crime. But <laughs> you know, growing up, growing oh, up, you know they call it bagging on each other or snapping or and you got moated, you know stuff like that it was all good fun. Now you know you crack somebody's jokes, you know and they bring a pistol to school, so things. Hey. Are, Things have changed. Yeah, no doubt. I'm guessing, Dave, you picked up uh, some things on the road, too, from your previous employment. I mean, yeah. you had some brilliant talkers there. Well, and so like, he was doing the ums. There, there's certain people on current rosters that cut a promo oh like that. goodness. It's the worst thing in the world. Why are you using the word as a comma? <laughs> it just drives me nuts. Like, I can't. I can't talk to somebody like that. When someone starts saying, um, I automatically think they're, they're full of it. Well, when you, when you get in the ring with me, um... On um, what? I mean, <laughs> what is wrong with you? You know, and I got, I, like that. I got a, oh, I love this dude. He's his name's Big Tiny, and he does. He's like the movie. He used to bodyguard with me with Snoop, and he's he's a uh, light skin, green eyes like me, but he's seven feet. He's seven feet, right? And uh, he's standing next to me, and uh, he used the word, you know, so. You know, I'm going over here. You know, and I'm like, no, dog. You know, <laughs> and I would count. And Snoop and I would be in the car like, if he says 20, you know, I'll give you 10 bucks. And he's like, no, he's going to say 40. And the drive from like the from the a gym, Snoop don't work out, the drive from the studio uh, back you know, to his house or whatever, and we get like 45, you know, you know, we know. Stop saying you know. Oh, you're, you're talking to us, so I don't have to know. But I, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I hate people that use space words 
And uh, yeah, usually on the announce team too, which is Ooh, really wow. Well, really, we've really, seen some of those. You know, speaking of which, man, I need to give a shout out though, man. Uh, you know, uh, the Pope man is killing it. Man. Oh, he's I, doing a great. And job. I was gonna beat him up too because I just don't like his face. But you know, I'm, he does a good. He's doing a good job. He's making. He's entertaining. He reminds me a lot of Jesse's body. You know him and uh, you know Josh are doing a good job over there. But I, I just give him a shout out, and uh, I'll never give him a compliment again. We we love the Pope. We saw the Pope at the you remember the Mid South Legends fan yeah, that's fest. Right. He, he was, was the Junkyard Dog uh, tribute yeah, battle royal. He, he was great. He he almost you know took us back to JYD and uh, he came out with similar trunks. He actually won the battle royal. Dump. We, we, he the won dump. the battle royal. Yeah. He won the Mid South Legends kids? fan fest battle royal. No. Uh, I think well, he's going up against like guys, superstars from the '80s. So you of know, course yeah, he you know was. rock and roll express. Yeah, of course he was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the rock and roll express was in the match. Hey, think about that. They still got the same hair. <laughs> they they look good though. They, yeah, they, they do. The mullet's gonna come okay, back listen, and stop. Listen, watch. listen, guys. Watch. I, I want you to be honest with me. When I'm, we'll be polite. We'll say sixty, and I'm showing up with what strands of a mohawk on the top of my head with. <laughs> Stuff going on and the same singlet and selling my eight by tens from the two thousands. I want you guys to say I look good too. I will, and I'll buy. <laughs> and We're I'll buying buy an eight by ten too. Yeah. We're buying. <laughs> TyrusSmash.com. You got to go there to buy the T-shirts, multiple of them. Uh, get up there. Get up on the YouTube page. The vignettes will keep on coming. Little Johnny, I'm guessing, is going to get smashed. At Brodus Clay on Twitter. Tyrus, it's been fun. Thank you very Thank much, you, my man. friend. You guys are great.